Okay, everybody, welcome back to Chin Fat. In this episode, this is the second episode in this uh, small series on color grading for this project. It's actually part of a bit of a larger series of uh, showing you guys how to edit, how to sound mix, how to uh, clean your projects, titles, all those different things for prepping a project. And even that is a bigger part of a large playlist of a whole bunch of episodes. So now we're in episode something like 4,000,565, I can't remember. Anyway, uh, some stupid number like that. All right, but now, uh, all right, so we showed you in the last episode the scopes, the Lumetri scopes over here. We had the waveform, the vector scope, and the parade up. Actually, I want to put the parade on the bottom here, so I'm going to put the parade on the bottom. Um, all right, but let's move over to this panel right here. This is called the Lumetri color panel. If you're not seeing this, you might be in the editing layout or the assembly layout. Right now, you would need to be in the color layout. You hit color. If you don't see these bars up here for some reason, you can go under window and hit them here under workspaces at the top, and then you can choose the color layout. These are old, these are customized ones that I've made myself. You won't have as many here unless you've been making them for you. Uh, Ryan default. Who the hell's Ryan? I don't even know a Ryan that does editing, so I don't know where that came from. Somebody broke into my house in the middle of the night named Ryan and uh, did his own layout. Let's see what it looks like. That's really weird. Okay, now that I'm creeped out a little bit, I'm going to move over to the Lumetri color panel and talk about this. All right, first of all, I'm going to go up here. I've done a little bit of color grading on this. I'm going to, I'm going to clear this, by the way. I'm going to go up and hit uh, this little reset key, which will reset the entire grade. So everything, now notice everything's kind of in the middle here. Not, you don't have any of these sliders that are slid around, right? Like that, anything like that. These, that's, everything's neutral right now. But this is separated into uh, all these different little uh, drop-down menus here. You've got basic correction. You've got creative. You've got curves. You've got color wheels and match, and you've got uh, HSL secondary and vignette. So if you click on any one of those, uh, the, it'll it'll drop down the entire menu for, for that area, and uh, we're going to talk about these uh, one by one here. Keep in mind that as you play through your project and you're in the color, once you're in the color arrangement, your playhead suddenly does this. Whatever one you put your mouse over, it selects the, the it will select the video that the playhead is over, and that way it's going to. This is basically real time adding an effect to your uh, to your clip. When you decide to grab one of these and you drag it to one side or the other, we just added an effect to this. In fact, you can see that if we zoom up here and look at this little effects tab right there. Uh, let's in fact make sure. Let's this uh, right now. It's, it's got this added. I'm going to show that in a minute. But right now, there's no effect added to this at all. If I go up and I slide this to the right uh, to the right, watch what happens. To this let's see this little green effects tab right there. Watch what happens to that. Suddenly, this has changed colors. That's like a little magenta color there or something. Now this clip has an effect added to it. If you select any clip and go up to the effect controls, it shows what effects have been added to your clip. First of all, the motion tab. This is just a native tab. It's always there. It's always on every clip. The opacity tab as well. You cannot delete these. You can reset them, but you can't delete them. Uh, but now we move down a little further. I'm going to collapse these. And the time remapping as well. These three are native to the clipper. They're motion, opacity, time remapping, native to every clip. But this is an effect that has now been added to this clip simply by moving the sliders over here. So I'm going to select this, delete it. Now watch this as I move this. See, all of a sudden it just adds that effect to this clip. Because now these are the numerical versions of your visual sliders over here. If we arrow down our basic correction and watch this. See, temperature is moved to 29.93 and over here 29.93. But you also have this visual slider. Look at these numbers, how they move in sync here to here. So this effect that's now been added, anything you do over here will affect that specific effect over here and change the color of your, of your image. You also want your playhead over your image so you can see the changes that are being made, being made real time. If I move my mouse over this one, but I happen to move over and select this one. See, they did automatically select this one, but now I over didn't override and selected this clip over here. And now look, I'm changing my clip here, but I don't see anything changing. So if I brighten this way up, do heavy contrast, highlights, everything, I'm smashing the heck out of the shot, but you can't tell because right now I have this selected. If you move your playhead over and look at that, oops, I've destroyed my shot. See, all these sliders changed the shot that was selected. Reset that. In fact, let's just select this Lumetri color panel, delete it. All right, let's talk about this panel over here. So I'm going to correct, I'm going to work on this first, or just have my uh, my playhead over this first shot here. And see this shot from a previous episode has a warp stabilizer added to it, so it already has an effect added to it. All right, so basic correction. Let's talk about what this how this panel works. As we move down here, you have input light. This is if you're shooting, if you're shooting in a really, a very, very flat uh, log format, like C log, S log, V log, whatever you're using, uh, that is a very flat profile. We talked about flat profiles. This is a, very, this is a fairly fat profile. This is actually red uh, film log, which is 
fairly flat, but not very as flat as some of those uh, log uh, footages get. If, if you're shooting in log, the reason why people shoot in log is because so they can, it preserves the highlights and the dark levels. It doesn't destroy a lot of those, the details and the highlights in the dark, so you can decide where you want those later on. So the input LUT deals with, if you are dealing with a certain type of log, you can install it right here before you start. It only has a few in here. You can install new ones if you get uh, a custom log. And what the, the LUT does, LUT is called a lookup table. It basically just gives a certain look to your image. And this kind of gives, and it's Selecting one of these will, like the Rec. 709, this is for Alexa, so this is going to be a little bit different than red. But you click on that and look how it darkens, it contrasts everything up, gives it a certain level of, of uh, saturation. That is the Alexa LUT right there. And there's going to be other ones here as well. The, let's try, and you, you, then each one of these is going to give you a different look. You have to kind of look these up online to see what these are doing. But if, if you shut on a, on a Sony or a Canon, you can have to uh, look up some of their LUTs and install them for yourself if you want an input LUT. An input LUT does it before you actually start grading. It's just it, make, it kind of gives it more contrast and saturation before you actually start doing the grade. But you can do all that down here as well. You don't need the LUT. It just saves you a little bit of time sometimes. All right, as we move down, white balance. And you actually have this white balance selector. If you have something that's white in the in the image that still has detail to it, you can select on this white balance. And remember, we talked to the elementary scopes, we talked about color balance. If the image, if the white is reflecting more red or green or blue color, it's gonna compensate by changing these sliders. Right now, I don't really have anything white in here. If I click on this, maybe, I don't know, maybe the pages here of a book. Let's try to click on the pages of the book there. See, and this is a reading that it's a little bluish, probably from this light hitting from the outside window. It gives the compensation with a little bit of red, but I don't really have anything white in this image right now to, to automatically read that. But what does temperature and tint do? These are two basic sliders where uh, they have complementary colors, kind of blue and uh, kind of the teal and orange and then the magenta green here. Sliders, if you grab the temperature slider, slide back and forth, it's going to push more toward the blues. If you push it the other way, it's going to push more toward the reds. So we mentioned how this shot was too red before, so if we push over toward the blues, then it corrects it a little bit. Now the green magenta, the green channel is too high, you can take it more toward the magenta and get rid of, and kill some of that green uh, greenness in the image as well. So we have the magenta green slider and the blue and orange slider for basic correction. Primarily used for balancing, balancing color balancing your shot if the color balance looks off. Reset that back to normal. Uh, tone. The definition of tone is basically luminance levels. When people talk about skin tone, technically they are, well, a lot of people think they're talking about color, but oftentimes what the, the term skin tone is actually referring to is the darkness of the skin. How light the skin is, how dark it is, it is, it's basically refers to uh, brightness levels. And if you look at tone, it's the same thing. Tone here is exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, De dealing with luminance levels more than color. Uh, I'm going to bring up just my waveform here and talk about the IRE scale here. Uh, basically, these sliders affect certain portions of your image here. Now, blacks and whites are kind of the two extreme, and blacks are going to be down near around from anywhere from 0 to about 20 IRE. The whites are going to be from about 80 to 100 IRE. That's where it's going to mainly affect those levels. It's up in those levels with these sliders. Exposure is going to be the mids around 40 to 60. Shadows are going to be around 20 to 40 and highlights are going to be around 60 to 80, but the whites and the blacks, as far as Adobe defines it, are the ones that are on the extreme at the 100 and 0 levels. I should say 0, zero to 20 and 80 to 100. So if we mess with exposure, this is only messing with kind of the overall exposure of the image. Highlights, look at this, how this just kind of stretches the upper portion. It's kind of messing with that portion of your image. Whites are going to do the very tippy top. See how we can get the very tippy top up there? Blacks is at the very, very bottom, so it's going to drag the bottom stuff down. And shadows is going to get the lower portion right before the blacks. So you have some basic sliders here uh, helping you to be able to adjust tone. And at the very bottom of the image is going to be saturation. If we look at our vector scope YUV, and we grab our saturation slider, you can see that the, the hue is not changing, it's just boosting and blooming the saturation, these colors, out toward their regions. It's pushing the blues off toward the blues, the yellows toward the yellows, and we tend, tend to have a very yellowish shot here as a result. And if you drag this down the opposite way here, you're basically going to pull all the color out until there is no saturation. So that's the basic slider. Creative. In my opinion, they should have this at the bottom because usually the creative tab is something you can kind of do. When we finish with this project, I'll show you a practical explanation of this. But this is basically to add a look to your film after you're done color grading. And as you arrow through these, you have different looks for your movie. Uh, and th these are LUTs. These are ones that have pre-programmed lookup tables, things that have been programmed already. A template that you just basically click on. Look at this. When I click on this one here, it basically adds that LUT to your image. 
And look at the saturation. These things kind of come across very contrasty, very uh, saturated as well, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but sometimes it can destroy your image as well. Uh, you can either arrow through these and choose one like this and through, hit through these arrows so you see one that you like and then just click on it and it will change it to that LUT. Or you can pull down this list and if you know what you're looking for, you can quickly scroll down to the one you want. Red wave, I don't know what that is, but that's, uh, oh, noir red wave. You have different noirs down here. But, uh, but yeah, usually this is kind of the last step uh, that you do to your color graders uh, working with a look. And then you also have these intensity sliders up here. Let's give this more of a contrasty look. There we go. You have this intensity slider that controls that. Once you add a look, say you like that look, but it's too intense, you can turn down the intensity and get it exactly where you want to. This shuts it off. This makes it more extreme. So you can drag this down to you say, I like it right about there. Should we set that? Down here, they have some other interesting kind of look adjustments here, uh, like faded film. If you let's let's if, we, if you have an image that's very very contrasty, uh, this faded film look kind of pulls up. It doesn't really like kill the over, overall uh, comparative contrast as much as it kills. It just adds this kind of wash to it. It's it's a little weird the way this works, but it's, it adds this little wash to make it look like kind of old film. You have the sharpen tool here if your image is, and this you have to kind of look at really close to see. Let me drag this sharpen way over. Let's look at this and look how it's sharpened the edges of your image. I'm going to do undo and watch very closely to the edges here. And see, now it almost looks blurry because it feels so soft. And you can actually soften that up more by dragging it down negative like that. And it actually does uh, end up softening up the image. So if an image is too sharp, and you can de-sharpen it a little bit. If it's not enough, you can just sharpen it just a little bit and make it seem a little more crisp. Now, Vibrance is an interesting little feature, and I've heard that this comes from Photoshop. I'm not sure. I'm not a big Photoshop person, but I, I believe people what they tell me. Anyway, the, the Vibrance is basically boosting saturation in the lower saturated images. Uh, this is one thing they kind of concluded the Vibrance for us, so you can increase saturation in uh, in, in things that are kind of that, that will not in the lower saturated portions of the image without oversaturating skin tones, essentially. So drag this up. In fact, if we kind of go over to one where we can see skin tone here, and let's go basically correction just quickly get a little bit more exposure a little bit more contrast uh, a little bit more just general saturation on this image here uh, and that's looking a little greenish let's go a little more magenta we'd have to really look at the scopes to look at the skin tone there uh, but now let's go to our uh, uh, vibrance under creative here we grab the vibrance and we drag that up you see it's starting to you see it's starting to kind of get these uh, the saturation these lower saturated areas uh, where it is not affecting the skin tone and until you start really boosting up then I can see it's starting to affect it. Vibrance will also kind of maintain a level of skin tone and a little bit of color in it if you drag it all the way down. It's looking black and white but it still has just kind of hints of tones and color tones in it. Uh, so kind of an interesting little feature there but like yeah basically this increases saturation on the items that are already less saturated in the image and leaves the things that are already saturated kind of alone is, is the idea. Saturation is the over overall saturation of your Entire image. We've our there's this is an additional slider here. I uh, just make some adjustments. If you do a look, it makes some adjustments based on your on your look that you've added. As you go down, you can have you can change colors in your. Sometimes you'll have like blue colors in your highlights or blue colors in your darks or the red or or, or opposite. You might have red colors in your darks or or in your highlights. And this helps with your shadows and your highlights to change kind of the tint. If you got kind of a bluish tint in the highlights, you can drag these off more. You can warm those up, the darks up, and then you can cool off the highlights make it look more like, uh, and this will kind of emphasize these kind of highlights, the blue and the highlights, well, red in the, in the darker tones of, of your image there. And tint balance just kind of changes, the, shifts the general image of the, the general tint of the image in the ways that we meant before. Tint is basically the green magenta slider, so that's kind of changing more of the green and, and, and uh, magenta colors in those areas there. I, I don't tend to use these a whole lot when I'm really trying, I found that the curves are a lot more powerful, especially when you're trying to affect the shadows. We'll get into that and kind of show you later on. But I'm going to, for now, I'm going to hit this reset and reset my entire Lumetri panel here and we're going to go down to curves. This is where a lot of the power exists within color grading is within your curves. The basic correction like is just what it says. It, ba it does the basics of uh, color grading. This is where you really get into some, some really powerful features here. The way a curve works here is you basically have, you'd almost have to imagine, and I like that Resolve does, does this. Resolve puts a histogram across this of your image. And the histogram really helps you to see what you're, what you're grading. That isn't something they've added until recently. Uh, before it was just kind of this, the same curve here. But what this does, just a quick layman's explanation, this node down here is your darks node. And then if you drag it over to uh, this side of your image here, if you look at the bottom here, this the whole bottom here is basically your kind of dark region down here. And this whole upper region is your highlights region. Now this is your dark node. 
this is your highlight node. And in between, if you think of a gradient like your IRE, you go from zero all the way up to mid-gray, which is 50, and then all the way up to 100. So this, basically, this is your gray level right here as you're moving along this line. And this is telling you what to affect. If you want to affect your darks, your mids, your highlights, you can click and add a node onto it and affect those. Now, this is the, uh, let, let's call it the turn it up region. And this is the turn it down region. So basically, anything you drag down here is going to turn it down. Anything you drag up here is going to turn it up, make it brighter. So brighter up here, darker down here. And I'm going to double click on this node here, get reset it here, take that one out away. Now watch what happens when we grab our dark slider and we drag it to the right. This uh, will, and let's also do this. Let's bring up our waveform here. So our waveform, watch, look at the waveform, look at the image as we drag this across. It starts bringing down the darks first until it hits the bottom, and then it just slowly starts crushing everything else. If you drag it all the way to the right, everything is crushed. If you grab your highlights, it'll bring the highlights down first. Look how it's grabbing the top of the image first and then pushing it down until it eventually starts to flatten it. And then it brings everything down to zero and flattens it. So it's doing it by the highlights first. This is doing it by the darks first. Uh, if you grab this and drag it up, it increases the darks. We bring this down here. This decreases the whites. So then we showed you where we could bring this to the middle and you create this like perfect gray right here in the middle. It's perfect mid gray in the middle because the darks have been defined, redefined as middle gray. The whites have been defined as middle gray. And there you go. So where this is really helpful is to really fine tune and uh, mess with uh, contrast and, and luminance levels here. So what we can do is we can move up a little ways and we're going to go to about 25% grays here. We can put a note and we can grab this and we can redefine those darks as darker. Now we can move up the scale here and maybe move around like 75% uh, gray and we can grab these and increase them to highlights there. And this is creating what they call an S curve. This S curve now creates the shape of an S and you're gonna create you're gonna create contrast based off of this. Let's first of all, this will be easily demonstrated because right now this is a very flat image. So I'm gonna go to my basic uh, correction and spread that out a little ways. Spread out our contrast, bring up our exposure a little bit and make this a little more contrasty. So there we go. Let's bring up the exposure a little bit more. Now we've got a little bit more levels to deal with. Let's go to our curves. Now watch what happens. We grab the darks down here. We drag them down. And we grab the highlights and drag them up. We create more contrast. Now look at that spread we have between the darks and the highlights as opposed to, let's turn this off right here. This turns the whole effect off. And look how flat. And then look how contrasty and see what the difference is, and we've created a little S-curve. But you can really, if you're having trouble, if you want to darken the darks, but like leave the face alone, look what you can do. You can grab your darks and drag them over, and we can kind of find where that face exists, and then we can bring up the elevation on the face there. And then it's dark, and it has kind of this curve as it slides off and, and leaves the face values alone while darkening the darks. Right here, we've crushed it, so we've basically crushed our details, but that's what our curve does. Now, you also have access, this is your luminance channel right here. If you select an individual one, now you have access to their just the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. We've kind of shown you this already, how you can bring down the blue and then you're left with the green and the red and, and vice versa. We can bring down the red. Uh, but if you've got like issues where you're getting too many blues in the highlights, you can just grab the blue channel here, bring down the blues and bring down the blues in the highlights up at the tippy top here, and maybe boost up the mids here. Keep the mids where they are while boosting down the highlights and bring a killing kind of the blue highlights there. So you got a lot of control there in the curves. especially when it comes to uh, accessing individual color channels, the luminance levels in each individual uh, color channel. Right. These curves are something they've added in the last past like year or so. I can't remember when they added these, but these are really, really cool. I've been impressed with these with these curves. And I've been complaining about Premiere over Resolve, saying Resolve's got a better this and that. Well, this is where I think Premiere has something better than Resolve. And uh, they do have these curves inside of Resolve. But this one I really like because it's got this little slide bar right here. Because you're going to add a curve on these things here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate what these do. But if you add several points, you, it, you can create a curve on adjusting certain colors. But on Resolve, if it's on the end, and if it's, if it's on the very end, your curve kind of moves over and comes over to the other side of the screen here. And if you don't like that, it's that's annoying. You can just slide it over and say, well, be right there. And, that, and I like that a lot more. So, so Premiere has one thing on Resolve. So there you go. All right. So I double click on those dots to, uh, to refresh them back to normal here. But what these do, these are verses here. These are hue saturation curves. You've got hue versus saturation, hue versus hue, hue versus luminance, luminance versus saturation, saturation versus saturation, and all these curves here. So what these do individually here, first of all, 
hue versus saturation. So, so when you're using the verses, basically this is what's going to be changed right here is the saturation within a specific hue. So if we, let's let's grab her, uh, like some color in her face right there. I'm gonna grab this eyedropper and click right on the face there. And what this does is it adds three dots. The center dot is the color range that this chose right here, kind of this reddish color range. And then this is a kind of a soft point. As it comes from this point, it softens off through these reds and softens off through these reds so they gradually doesn't turn red, it turns yellow, turns blue over here. But it kind of puts two dots before it changes, out, goes too far outside the red realm. You grab this middle one here and you drag down. And if you start dragging and you hold shift, once you grab this here, if you hold shift and start dragging it down, it'll lock it to that middle point there. It won't let you waver back and forth like this. But hold shift as you start dragging down, it'll lock it to that point. Look what happens as we drag this down. It's basically desaturated all the reds out of her face. So that's des taking it down. Notice this is saturation, the saturation line. The top is fully saturated, the bottom is desaturated. Notice how it's gray at the bottom and very red at the top. So if we boost this up, it, it boosts saturation in that color. If we drag it down, it desaturates, it takes it down, it takes it away. So if something is kind of bleeding saturation in your image, if you have a very specific color, let's say this color, I'm, I'm going to intentionally saturate this image, but let's say the camera May, shot it and it looked very saturated like this. What we can do now is we can go and choose this. And look at how the face is kind of bleeding that color there. Uh, in fact, let's go to our uh, lumetri scopes here. Let's go to our scopes over here and show our YUV vector scope and show you. Now, see how this is kind of bleeding saturation towards the yellows and reds? If we choose that saturation on our face there and we go to this middle dot and drag it down, hold down shift, look how that's bringing in just that, especially right around that, that line right there. It's just bringing down the mostly the reds somewhat towards the yellows uh, image there and if we increase this if we drag this over look how it starts affecting more regions of reds more regions of yellows and it's desaturated and it does this on a curve basically because if we want to add another point and bring it down on the yellows bring it down uh, you can really bring down a lot of saturation and leave a very specific image that's saturated in fact, with some of these, you would probably be able to achieve that look where somebody has a super red lips and everything else is desaturated. Anyway, let's turn this back to normal here. Going to double click on one of these dots and this will turn that scale back to normal. Move down to the hue versus hue. Hue versus hue will select a very, I'm going to keep this saturated for, for uh, intentionally to kind of demonstrate this. If I choose a very specific hue, like uh, let's choose the pants here. Very blue hue. Notice how it chose the blue over here. And we grab that blue and we start dragging it up. Look what it starts doing to the blue jeans. It starts changing them. This is a hue line now. This hue line goes from green to blue to magenta, to red, to green. It's got the whole range here as you slide it up and down to yellow, and it will change the color of that saturation. And you can widen the amount of area that you're saturating by increasing this area here. And you can add even a couple nodes if you want to and bring these up and increase a big area that you want to change the saturation in. So you have a lot of power up here, but usually this is just used to just kind of maybe make the skin tone look a little bit more skin tone-ish, uh, which we will get into. Clear that. Hue versus luminance. This is going to change the luminance on a specific hue. If we go over and select it once again, kind of the face, if we get our eyedropper here and put it on her face and get that, uh, let's scroll this over a little bit so we can see what we're messing with here. But now that luminance on her face there, as we, uh, that, that hue on, on her face, as we drag it down, it's gonna darken it or it will increase the brightness of it. And if we're getting pretty destructive here, if we bring that up, if we just wanna brighten the face a little bit, we can just drag it up and now her face is brightened. And keep in mind, all these dots and everything is because I saturated the crap out of this thing and it's really it's really starting to destroy the image. I kind of over overdid it there. Lumen versus saturation is going to take the saturation in a certain uh, luminance level. You can decrease the saturation in a certain luminance level. Let's, in fact, let me get this, uh, let's move to this image here. We have kind of dark, uh, a little more, we can see more dark, dark regions. Let's bring the exposure down a little bit. Now we can go to the curves, go to luma versus saturation. We're going to choose the darks here. And say you want to kill the saturation in the darks here. You want it to be kind of gray so it just looks dark. We can bring down these nodes here and that will bring down the saturation in those dark levels right there. Let's see kind of before and after. See, I can see a little color hue in these darker areas, and now when you do this, look how it just grays those areas up. It's very subtle, but it is doing that. You can increase the range, but eventually it'll get into the mid levels. If you move it over, then now it's doing the mids, and now it will do it to the highlights as well. Saturation versus saturation. If you choose an area that is a certain level of saturation, and you want to increase the saturation in that, in that uh, luminance level there, you can do that as well. So in this tool, I have I have not found a, a bit specific purpose for this. This actually is bringing out the color of the couch really nicely there, making it very blue, which I like. It's kind of increasing the saturation, and you can see that happening over here. 
move down to the next one, color wheels and match. Color wheels and match are really nice, especially if you're matching two people's faces. I only have one person's face in this image right here, but you can use it against other images as well. Let's do, what we're going to do here is I'm going to do a basic correction here on this image. You've got your luminance sliders. This is your shadow luminance sliders here. This is your mid-tones. I'm going to bring up the mid-tones and bring up the, this is just luminance levels that we're messing with, nothing in color. And then let's, uh, let's, let's make the, let's define the highlights just a little bit more there. And bring those up. So that's the luminous highlights, the midtones, and we've created some contrast by these sliders here. And now let's work on color hue. Let's kind of shift the hue a little bit off into this direction here. Warm up the face a little bit. Warm that image up a little bit. And let's say that's our that's the image. I like that image right there. And now there's another shot here as we move along. This is the exact same shot, so we just only have to copy and paste it to this one. But I'm going to move this to a close-up, which is a different framing here. The frame her on the couch under the same lighting levels right here. So this is kind of cool here. What you've got, well, first of all, when you're just grading, you've got your comparison view. You hit your comparison view, and it's got on the right the image that you are grading. So here I can start grading this image here. I can darken the darks, mess with the midtones, et cetera. I'm just going to undo that right now. But over here, you've got a reference monitor. This is your mini timeline. This is a, a duplicate timeline here that basically shows your timeline. And I'm going to say, I want to match it to this shot. This is really cool because now when you're grading this shot, you can you have something to compare it against. You can start saying, okay, I need to get, I need to get more color in her face because look how white her face is there. So I can grab this and boost more color into the shot there. And uh, I can keep trying this, but but there's an, an easier way to do this. Right now, I'm going to leave face detection on. I'm going to undo what I've done here, get these back to normal. But you can double click on these and get them back to normal. And by the way, when you start moving something here, it will have it will fill in the circle and say there has been an adjustment done on the midtones hue wheel here. If you double click, clears it, and now it's got this open gap in the middle. And see, look at this. Now that's been changed, you know, because it's filled in. That's just how it shows you that it's that it's, something's been changed in those areas. And the open circle means it hasn't been done yet. This when you slide it, it turns blue. When it's white, it's neutral. All right, so I'm gonna hit. To, I'm gonna go to apply match. What it's gonna do? It's gonna read this one and try to get this one to look just like that. And it will detect the face and get the face the same tones here. And look at that. That did a pretty good job. It's not as contrasty, but that's a good starting point. So now all I have to do is maybe decrease the shadow here. Shadows make it a little more contrasty, and maybe increase the oops, and maybe increase the midtones. But look what it did! It adjusted all these colors here on these wheels, the highlights, the midtones, the shadows to get these two shots to try to get them to meet a little bit. And then you might have to just do a little bit of fine tuning to get them to meet. But yeah, look at the before and after here, before and after, and that's much better. Sometimes when I'm having trouble matching faces, that that really helps here. HSL secondary. HSL secondary is where you get the most powerful option to grab a specific color vector and just affect that color vector. So we can go to our secondaries here. If you're trying to uh, just kind of highlight the sky or maybe the blues out of this couch or the reds in the wall, that's where secondaries help. And this has a hue, saturation, luminance slider. It can choose a range of colors based on hue, saturation, and luminance. Hue is going to be that generalized color. You can hit your set color here and it will create what's called a key. It's basically going to just key out the, the portion of the image that it's going to be using. And I'm going to select the range of the blue on the couch here. Let's say we're trying to emphasize the blue on the couch. So it chose this range right here from here to here on this blue scale by clicking on that. And, and also what it did, this is a feather here. It basically gradually feathers off of that so, so it's not such a hit. It hits this point and then it's done. Uh, that way this avoids getting like noise and bouncing in the, in, in the, tra in the transitions in the transitions from one color to the next. You have your little plus button here. You can go, th these are general color areas right here. I kind of don't like using those. I usually use the, the eyedropper. And uh, what I, I'm going to go over here and choose a darker blue as well. And that cho chose a wider range of blue a wider range of saturation and a wider range of luminance. I'm going to choose this down here. This color gray will show me what it is choosing. This is keep in mind this is a, a compressed image, so we are getting some noise in here. This is not the original red footage. But now you can grab your sliders here and increase the range of hue, saturation, and luminance. If we're trying to just get the couch here, finally I can kind of get all the couch. It's sharing the colors with their jeans right there. Uh, but now to clean this up, you can move down to Denoise. Denoise is going to clear up some of those white spotty noises. Now blur is going to soften this mask so you're not seeing it bounce and, and dance as much. But with the compression, it's really going to be hard to kind of choose all the couch here. You can slide this around here until you get as much as that couch as possible. See, I'd say don't get the shady parts right there and just get the more prominent blue parts right there and you won't notice as much noise. Saturation, let's see. That's not changing much. You can slide these back and forth and see what gets you the most amount of couch. Same as the hue. 
and once you get as much as the couch as possible, that's all it's going to grade in that image and nothing else. So I'm going to turn that off. And now we can move down here. And based on this mask that I've chosen, those items right there, it's only going to affect those colors. If I grab my correction here and grab it toward the blues, look how it's making the couch look more blue and not the girl, not the walls. Or if we make it look more green, red, whatever color you want that couch to look, you can change that now. Let's say we want the couch to look very blue and we want to, uh, and we want to make everything else gray. We could actually do this. We could, uh, this is a mask inverse. I'm going to click that and it will now inverse the mask and whatever uh, and what I affect now will affect everything but the couch now, which is kind of cool. So if I go down to my saturation, here's that kind of a sensitive look that we're talking about when you make the just the lips red. We're going to desaturate everything else but the couch. And now say we want to emphasize the blues on that couch. You can actually make, we'll show you how to make another color panel later, but I'm going to add a elementary color effect. Now I've got two up here, one, two, and on the second one, and I will go under basic correction and increase the blues here and now it will make the couch look very blue and everything else look like it's black and white. Anyway, that's just kind of the basics that there of that. But uh, but that's what your HSL secondary does. It usually is used to help kind of make uh, maybe the sky pop or make the greens and the trees pop or make uh, skin tone pop. That's where but you have a lot of power over choosing what portion of your image uh, you want to affect by using your HSL secondaries. And that is called actually secondary gra uh, color grading. All right, last thing uh, here on the color panel is the vignette. This is kind of this is kind of cheesy. I don't know how much I like the vignette because uh, you don't have a lot of control over it. Vignetting is used quite often in color grading, but it is used but it is used mostly to emphasize a certain portion of the screen. The uh, Adobe just has a kind of a basic uh, vignette that you can do. Let's kind of add a contrast to this, just make it look a little better. But the vignette, watch what it does. If you drag it one way it feathers to the darkness. If you drag it the other way, it does a, a white vignette. This almost looks like a dreamy flashback or something. You have a midpoint you can adjust. You have the roundness, which will change the shape of it. And then you have the feather, how soft the edge is or how hard edged it is based on the feather. But usually if you do see a vignette, it's more like this. It'll be very feathered. And uh, let's change it right there. Where it just kind of emphasizes everything in the middle. It makes it kind of redo a little bit of the lighting here. Uh, where it emphasizes something in the middle. And and that's the, that's kind of the weakness of this vignette. Is it just mostly does it kind of in the middle. And if you do it in a subtle manner. Watch this. What happens. See how it's kind of flat up here. It's kind of even coloring. Well, not even. It kind of transitions to blue there. But if we grab this amount and we drag it down like this. And then we feather it more. Bring it in a little bit more. It should be just kind of settled. That now it looks like there's kind of a light hitting her hair, and it's just kind of darker off the edges. See, look at this. This is without and with. And actually, there I think it works pretty well. Uh, sometimes when you see if the camera has a pan or a tilt, it's a dead giveaway that there is a, a vignette burned onto the image rather than the, the lighting that's making it look like that. All right, well, that, that is the control panel with the Lumetri color panel there. Uh, the next episode we're going to be going over, I will cover how to actually finally grade a project. And it's going to be this project that we're working on here.